recording now. Okay. So welcome to my uh, little presentation about some Apple specialties. You may see I'm using a MacBook, so I'm programming a lot on Macs. I also do a lot of Linux and Windows. I've been using Curl for 15 years now, and I'm an independent developer for 25 years. Mm -hmm. I web curl for for uh, Sojo and FileMaker libraries. FileMaker is a database uh, tool from Apple, and uh, Sojo is um, well, like a Visual Basic from for Mac, but also for Windows and Linux. And I have been uh, compiling curl uh, a ton of times. <laughs> Like I'm, I'm currently building it 15 times for different platforms. So for iOS, for, for macOS, for Windows, for Linux, it's it looks nice. So today I uh, want to talk a little bit of recent changes for uh, Curl or for Apple. So uh, I wanted to get uh, IDN support for domains um, into the, the Mac version of Curl uh, for the Apple operation systems. Uh, and we are talking about a little bit about the development requirements, about secure transport, and about what Apple chips actually. And the network framework, yeah, the new, new thing for the last years. So I have customers uh, using my call wipers to, well, sometimes access a URL with an umlaut in German or with an Asian character. So we have a need for that, and um, with EDN support, you get uh, the Unicode characters translated to ASCII names. You all may know that. Here's an example. Um, all these URLs starting with XN are already encoded, mm. and I figured out that Apple supports it already since 2017 in their own libraries. There's a WWDC video from the conference about uh, surprise. You can now pass UTF-8 URLs to our APIs since MacOS 10.13. That's a couple of years ago. And it's built into their API. So this endless URL, the Objective-C uh, Swift classes to uh, build your well, user interface. Uh, you can uh, directly use that. Uh, as well as for the lower C APIs, you can use it, and even the get address info uh, function got updated mm -hmm. to take UTF-8 if you want. But does it help for curl? So when we uh, just built a curl uh, to pass the UTF-8 UTF string to get address info, we get an IP. But uh, when we send the request, the host is warm. So the web server will just say, I don't know this domain. So um, I looked for what, what Apple has uh, to offer for EDN, um, a function to convert uh, to the domain name. And I found in the Unicode libraries, uh, there's actually a header file which talks about this. So I figured out there is a function for that, name to ASCII. UTF-8, there are a couple of variants of those functions. Uh, so I first picked the wrong one and uh, discovered that it didn't work. So uh, after a couple of tests, uh, I found the right function in the uh, ECU core library. It's available since macOS 10.13, but the headers actually shipped in later versions. Mm. So uh, it's, it works. Uh, and here's some sample code of the function to um, convert the name, we have to open a uh, conversion object, and then uh, we can call the function to convert the URL by passing in the UTF-8 string and uh, an output buffer. I use here just a SHA buffer of 256 characters, and then we can return whatever error code uh, matches uh, the behavior. We could even enhance it to um, detect which failure it was and then even return a better error code. But so far this already works uh, in, in the current branch. And on linking, uh, there was a funny thing because um, I don't need to link to the library. So why, why does that happen? Um, 
So I uh, figured out uh, we already linked to Core Foundation, and Core Foundation internally links to this URL. Um, the macros linker is very clever. That when whenever one library uh, loads another library and there's a symbol there, it finds it automatically. Well then, uh, we thought about, oh, we could have a runtime check to check if the library exists. But it doesn't exist. That's the thing Apple uh, uh, does. Uh, you can load the library, but there's no file on disk. Because Apple makes a big cache file with all the libraries. And uh, there are a couple of tools to look into this cache file to actually extract the libraries or find them. Um, the thing Apple uses here is uh, that they ship them all together as a big archive and they ship update archives for, for smaller releases. So their software automatically picks the newest libraries from the several archives and they, are, uh, they may be pre-linked, so they may already be mapped to a certain loaded address, uh, so uh, they can be loaded. So uh, I made a push request, uh, and Victor helped a lot there to um, get uh, it into, <coughs> into curl. It uh, basically implements the Apple EDN functionality for curl, similar to how the Windows EDN support works. And you can always override it if you use libEDN. So you can decide, libEDN goes first, uh, then uh, Windows or Apple. And uh, we could need a little bit help if someone wants to help uh, to get this feature detection correctly, so it automatically enables. Currently, it's an uh, option, so you can enable it uh, with a parameter for CMake or for Configure. And then I would like to uh, give a little excursion to the different operation systems from Apple, because uh, we got many. So first, we have the kernel. It's a macro kernel with a BSD personality. It's open source, you can download the source code. And on top of that, Apple has macOS, their, uh, their desktop user interface. Uh, they also have an iPhone OS. And from that, iOS is actually a child, so one way to implement it. And um, so they have common frameworks in the iPhone OS, which are used for iOS, for Apple TV, for Apple Watch, uh, and the Vision OS, and also from iOS, there's also the variant iPad OS, um, and we can use uh, dash if to detect uh, which version we have. So for um, the Apple IDN support, we use uh, dash if uh, target OS Mac, so we cover all the variants, because those Unicode libraries are available on all the platforms. But you could use dash if to pick one of uh, the individual operation systems if you have some specific feature. Yeah, or you just want to uh, show the, the current operation system name, uh, you could just use dash if to pick the name based on uh, what the compiler is compiling for. Then um, I thought, what, what do you need to ship an application on Mac, uh, the requirements? If anyone wants to ship something on a Mac currently, you need an Apple developer subscription. That costs $99 and includes the code signing certificate. So you can sign all your code. And uh, if you nowadays sign something for Windows, you will see that they charge $300 for the certificates. So, and, and we are shipping software for Mac and Windows, and we have to sign everything, but, but because otherwise all these antivirus tools would uh, put big alerts on screen, and that's really annoying. If you ship anything on Mac, you also need Xcode 13 currently, because Apple does notarization, which basically means uh, before you ship something, you automatically uh, upload your command line tool, your app, to an Apple server. They will run the antivirus test and malware check and they give you a receipt uh, which is included in the, in the download. A bit annoying, but uh, it protects us uh, for the pre-flight check uh, to get malware off the platform. And if you ship anything through the app stores, you must build with Xcode 15 now since April. So Apple doesn't accept anything built with older versions of Xcode. So basically, uh, you can support anything from uh, Mac OS 10.13, which shipped in 2017, and 
since Apple uh, supports um, Macs for five, six, seven years. This basically means you can ship uh, with the current Xcode version anything that runs on even 10 year old machines or 15 year old machines. Uh, I personally have a MacBook from 2012 running the latest operation system because there are open source uh, patches available to uh, even get it running on versions not uh, on laptops not no longer supported by Apple. So the conclusion then was uh, we can just decide to uh, ship the Apple IDE uh, support for all uh, Mac builds because well if you build anything uh, you will want to use a recent Xcode version and so uh, this should just work um, and uh, the library is basically always there because uh, yeah, you don't need actually to check because if you don't uh, except maybe if you build for something from 20 years ago okay but anyone who built something for today uh, should have the library then, uh, then um, there's secure transport um, the uh, library from apple to abstract from the socket api uh, and include tls support which is nice uh, we, we it's available in curl i built curl with that uh, beside OpenSSL. But it doesn't do any TLS 1.3, which got uh, and it got deprecated with Mega Standard 15 in 2019 when the network API was uh, our, uh, was introduced. Then let's take a look on the network framework, the new API from Apple to replace the old socket APIs and uh, secure transport. It's available in the API for C plain old C and for Objective C if you want the object orientated way. It can do everything you want to know what to do. TLS 1.3, uh, quick proxies, uh, web circuits, everything Apple needs for sensors. It's asynchronously and uh, it can be worked uh, synchronously which will, uh, I will show and it may be something that could be added to curl if someone wants to do the work. Um, I would hope that someone from Apple picks it up <laughs> because they would benefit the most of it uh, from it. Uh, they currently ship uh, curl 8.4 from uh, last December, I think, uh, with secure transport and libssl uh, lib libre included. And they include the ng HTTP2 on uh, Mac. So if you want to use curl on a Mac without uh, shipping your own curl version, you can just use uh, the built-in on the system. So and now I prepared something in Xcode for you. I thought about I could uh, make a test a project to do uh, the network framework and do it synchronously. So I have a little test app here um, that basically opens an endpoint and then creates a secure connection parameters. So um, you create a connection and you pass in the parameters and the parameters can specify all the options you want, like which certificate use to use, which HTTP version to use, which TLS version to use. I just picked the defaults here. And then we can connect synchronously, we can send a request, we can receive it and close it. And of course, curl mostly runs uh, synchronously or, or with a state machine. Uh, you could basically do similar. So um, the Apple thing here is complete, completely asynchronously. So when we want to connect synchronously, we would have to pick the queue, which is basically uh, a thread from the thread pool on where the callbacks happen. Uh, 
uh, then we would send the start request and our state change uh, handler would get uh, the, the change of the state so we can check if we have an error and then if the state is ready we got our connection so I just decided to make a little while loop here and wait for the for basically for the callback and uh, yeah this that's the connection step if something fails I hover it and uh, you can get an error code in a domain so you know uh, which part um, broke and then sending the same thing uh, but uh, yeah it's, it's asynchronously so we create a data object with the request um, then we call the send function and pass in the data and give our um, yeah, this is a block a code block uh, but I think in, in C++ it's normally named a closure so we get this uh, we get this callback function and uh, get a callback when the data is sent so we can wait for it to be sent and um, by closing a similar and receiving when we receive something um, we call the receive function we get a callback when data is coming in and then uh, we can uh, get a data object and this data object contains several buffers so uh, Apple's framework also collects the individual buffers as a list and we can make here a loop over the buffer list and then get each buffer into our, uh, our own array or char array collect all the input yeah, and, uh, I think I, I just printed out uh, to the console yeah and then closing is also asynchronously and, uh, so again a new state change handler and then we cancel the connection and we get a callback when the connection is cancelled but that means the processing is in another thread. Yeah, this here uh, runs in the thread. We specify uh, here as a queue. Um, technically, it can be the same thread you're running on, but then you can't just do sleep. You mm -hmm. have to use one of the um, core foundation functions uh, which, which allow uh, blocks to be dispatched. You get a, get a different sleep function. I just wanted to show it. Yeah, sure. That's interesting. Yeah, and if you really want to benefit from this, you would, of course, embrace uh, this asynchron thing and make your own state machine to see uh, which callbacks you get and then switch the states. This looks like a pretty high level API. Um, so, do you think, uh, is it possible to get access to those low level features of Quick, for example? So that you could plug it into curl. Oh, that's a good question. Do we get the socket already? I don't think it is. I, I, I don't think it's. Uh, well, then we can't. Follow. There are a ton of options. No, you have to sort of make a wrapper around it and create your own socket and paste it. Ah. Uh, so the mm, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's very high level. Yeah. Yeah, I did that in Apache, but um, don't want to do it again. <laughs> I'm not sure if, if this should be integral or if someone wants to do it. I just wanted to show it may be possible to convert the asynchronously API. So what uh, what TLS do you use when you build on? on uh, well, I use OpenSSL yeah. usually and uh, also secure transport for some customers. Yeah. When they're satisfied with, with our 1.3. Yeah. yeah. Thank you.